Hello, pod fam, and welcome to another episode of the Tea with Laura and Rachel. Today, we have a very special guest. She is a registered dietitian, a public health writer, and a self-proclaimed former chronic dieter, Camille Martin. Welcome to the show, Camille. What are you drinking today? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so we're not on video, but I'm drinking Hint water. It's I'm obsessed with it. I don't know if y'all have heard about it, but it's like... It's mm-hmm. flavored water, but it's not, there's, it's all natural flavors and, okay. it, you know, so it's not super sweet or anything like that. And in fact, the, uh, the woman who started the company has a really inspiring story. So, and I can't remember her name. I'll have to think of it, but she's got a book and it's awesome. So amazing. Yeah. I find so many, uh, like flavored waters, like we're up in Canada. Um, so I definitely have not heard of hit water before, but it seems like so many of them, it's like sugar is the number one ingredient. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And you know, you can get flavored water people without the sugar. Yes, you you can, you can. Um, and she had a really hard time. She had to patent the technology to get it to where it's no artificial flavors or anything. So it's really, really good. It's like, you just took a squeeze of lemon, put it right in your water. So yeah. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. Well, Rachel, you're also here. What are you drinking today? I have an herbal tea and it's a raspberry leaf tea. And so far I'm really loving it. I drank way too much coffee this morning. So I'm just trying to calm down a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) I think, uh, (laughs) yeah, when, when you get to your third cup, I was still like, this is fine. And then an hour later, I'm like, this is not fine. Um, (laughs) But what are you having, Laura? Uh, So I haven't had coffee yet today. And so I'm having a green tea with a rose petal and rose hip uh, infusion that is just a self blend that I did because as our listeners know, I've been obsessed with everything rose Mm -hmm. lately. And so I was just like, oh my gosh. I should put this in green tea. I could put this in every tea. So this is my little midday pickup instead of a cup of coffee because I know I'll just be like, you know, vibrating if if I go there now. (laughs) Just just buzzing around, buzzing around. Yeah, I need to get into the tea. Um, I need to, I never drink tea. Green tea, I know it's supposed to be so good and it is, but I'm stuck on water and coffee. So yeah. Well, that's okay. That's that's probably a typical morning for me, water and coffee. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be yes, honest. Same, same. <laughs> All right. Well, let's crack into it. You are a registered dietitian and a public health writer. So we would love to start off by asking you, what is your story? How did you get to this point in your career? What inspired you? What age did you start? Give us everything. Yeah. Okay. I started dieting when I was 12 years old, very, very young. Um, <sighs> Yeah, I know. Um, and so basically, oh I, I know <laughs> it's it's heartbreaking. I, I tell this story so often, so I forget, but that is really young. And um, I just got a lot of messages from the women around me and, you know, what I looked like mattered most of all. And no one was saying you're overweight and you need to lose weight because I wasn't. But I just got the message, you know, that's fattening. You shouldn't eat that. You need to, you know, di- I was praised for dieting. So I dieted, I took diet pills. I had an eating disorder in college and, you know, starving myself. Yeah, I was an emotional eater and still have those tendencies. So I would use food to make myself feel better. And um, I never got rid of that tendency and was always just blaming myself for feeling like, you know, lazy and out of control. And like, I just had no willpower, which is part of what keeps you in a dieting cycle because you feel um, like you're powerless and like you need something to help you fix it. But of course, you never solve the real problem, which is emotional eating. Mm -hmm. But um, I went to college, got a degree, continued with the whole dieting insanity until I was in my early 30s. And I decided one day I just I can't do this anymore because it was mentally It was torture mentally. I was abusing my body physically with the eating disorder and taking diet pills and all of that. So I just said, I'm not going to do this anymore. I can't. I'm I'm miserable. And so I decided that I was going to quit dieting and just be peaceful to wake up in the morning and just say, whatever I want to do today, I'm going to do it. 
I want to eat, I'm going to eat. Whatever I feel like eating, I will eat. And I really thought that I was going to gain tons of weight by doing this, but the opposite happened. Um, Mm -hmm. All that resistance was gone. And so I started being very excited about my life and started setting goals. And one of those was to learn about nutrition. And so I already had an English and a French degree. I had no plan to do anything different, but I went back to school at night after work to take a class at the local university and a nutrition class. And I loved it so much that I kept going and ended up with a whole new career. But yeah, so my mission is to help women not waste their lives doing what I did. And so many people are doing it. So many Mm -hmm. women are doing it, but we don't realize it because it sounds so normal to talk about it constantly. Like what diet are you on? Oh, I look so disgusting. I'm so fat. You know, it's like an epidemic. So that's why I'm doing this. Yeah. And I love the side that you highlighted is that you were praised for making the choice that was to, you know, cut calories and take diet pills. Um, I think that's a a side that a lot of people don't talk about because normally you do hear the, oh, like I was called fat. I think I'm fat and, and so on. Yeah. But it's amazing where that environment comes into play because this was positive reinforcement and then oh, yeah. it, just, it led to decades of like a toxic cycle for you. Completely. Yeah. And now that I'm in my 50s and I can look back, I mean, of course it was the 80s and everybody was completely ignorant on this topic. But yeah, I can look back now and see all of the the cultural influences, um, you know, um, patriarchal culture and a lack of strong women around me. And none of that is anybody's fault. It's like, we're all just a product of our environment, but I was, grew up in the South, um, in the U S South. And it was very much women are to be quiet and don't say what you think, you know, keep the Mm -hmm. peace, be sweet, be friendly and make everybody else feel good. And above all, look good, you know? So it's just, it's awful. And so now I have two daughters who are, um, one's just a teenager and one's preteen. And I mean, my message to them constantly is what do you want to do with your life? Who do you want to become? You can do anything. So I didn't get any of that. And most of my friends didn't either, but, but yeah, it's a cultural, it's a problem. But of course, and stop me, I'll I'll just go on all day, but um, (laughs) social media and all of that is, um, it's even worse for my kids. So they have to combat that extra layer of, you know, looking perfect with the airbrushing and nobody looks like that anyway. So yeah. No, exactly. And I feel like Rachel and I have talked about this before. We're just like, we don't even know how we would raise daughters and children in today's landscape because it's just like social media is so in your hand and Mm -hmm. you don't know what they're looking at. So I love that you're kind of breaking that that generational (laughs) trauma essentially of, you know, putting a new message in. Right. And so many I'm trying. 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 (laughs) I know it's just like, but so much to fight against, right? It is. It's it's crazy. Yeah. 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 And just listening to your story, I actually felt kind of tears coming to my eyes, like getting a little bit emotional, just hearing that you were 12 years old when you started, because thinking back to my time, and I know that Laura, you're going to touch on this a bit later, but we grew up in um, the horse world, equestrian world. So we were both very into sports. And, you know, my predisposition as with my genetics and stuff is I'm short and I'm curvy and that's Mm -hmm. okay. But like I was exercising so much that I took on a lot of muscle, but you are praised, especially like when we we were 12, that was in the kind of like mid early 2000s where like the type to be like was like Britney Spears, you know? Right. So I remember just the constant (laughs) comparison to other girls my age when I was like 13, 14 years old who weren't in the same sports world. So because they were 12, we're still pretty skinny and small. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, well, why don't I look like that? Um, And what's what's the matter with me? And mm -hmm. I look back and I'm like, you looked fine. Your body, you were just a growing person and you were doing a lot of physical activity. It's tragic because what you're saying is that we are, our worth is equated with what we look like. That's most Mm -hmm. important. You're probably off winning medals, riding a horse and like, 
you know, being completely immersed in something truly exciting that you love, but still you're getting this message. What's wrong with me? That my equivalent of that was looking at my dad has like every sports illustrated from day one. And so he would get, he would get the sports illustrated swimsuit issue and I would just open it up and look at it and just, I can still feel the feeling as an adult. Like, why don't I look like that? Well, okay. I'm not supposed to, but when you're little and you're looking at that, you're just like, I remember absorbing that. Like, I don't look like that. Mm -hmm. That's what, well, I hate to say it like this, but that's what men want. And I was yeah. thinking I'll never be, you know, nobody will want me. I don't look like that. You know, you're yeah. totally, you just don't measure up and, and girls are still getting that. And, you know, it's complete BS and it's got to change. So like what I'm doing, it's not just about dieting. It's about like now it's become so much more. It's like fighting against these cultural BS messages. And let me just say this too. I don't like anything that has to do with resistance, like fighting, fighting, fighting. What I want people to do is embrace your power and teach girls and women how to access their own internal power instead of being mad and like, you know, patriarchal society. I hate all of, it sounds so like critical, but if you embrace your own power and you teach girls how to do that and women, that goes a long way to, if you're, if you're preoccupied with what can I do, what can I contribute? Even when you're 50 and you're, you know, that's just the time when culture's telling you, you know, hang it up, you know, you're <laughs> sorry, <Yeah. laughs> look old, go away, go get in your rocking chair and knit a sweater. And it's like, what? I feel so good about myself now, but yeah. anyway, yeah. So. Yeah. And that actually just kind of reminds me of old Hollywood. I've been watching mm-hmm. like a lot of like ah, Lucille me Ball. Too. Oh my, God, oh my gosh. So I just watched Being the Ricardos. It's an amazing movie. Is it good? Oh, so good. So good. Okay. It's on Amazon Prime. And it was the fact because, uh, you know, Ethel, the actress playing her was not actually old. Neither oh. was Lucy. Like these are women <laughs> in their like, 30s who is only like, like I'm going to be 30 next month. And I'm just like, isn't it I would, crazy? I would be cast as like someone in their fifties, <laughs> you know? like Mrs. Robinson and The Graduate. Anne Bancroft yeah. was like, oh yeah, she was thirty, and she's like somebody's <laughs> mom, like this yeah. old. Yes, yeah, so I feel like especially like because that's what before Instagram and and social media we look towards celebrities mm-hmm. and movies mm-hmm. and, and TV, and you know, no wonder we're getting this idea of like, oh my gosh, I've, I've hit my expiration date. Like now oh, yeah. I can like, you know, I'm not even eligible to play senior citizens on movies anymore because <laughs> there's just like decades and decades of people who, you know, just women who were just no longer 20 and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, off to the seniors. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think mean, it's, it's getting better. 40s, the new 30, 50s, the new 40, whatever. But like, yes, it's yes. still, you're always going to get that. I don't look young. I, there's always something to pick yourself apart for. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's got to stop. I mean, I'm, I'm just not having it anymore. I'm sick of it. Yeah. No, same. Yeah. Like, same. So are we. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. toast. Here's the yeah, here's the toast to that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. 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 <laughs> Before we move further into, as a collective, why we're so done with this, let's yeah. first talk about <laughs> what eating habits are considered a diet and mm-hmm. why it doesn't work, and also importantly, why it affects our self esteem. We'd like to get some clarity on this because you know there's the diets that are like the name diets mm-hmm. that you can read about in a book and stuff. But we've been talking recently in the past where it's like, you know, I went through a period of time where I was exercising a lot and I was doing what fitness influencers were recommending. Mm -hmm. And I look back and I'm like, they didn't say that was a diet, but like drinking a protein, just protein powder in the morning is not normal. Well, that's such a good question because like it's all about how you're framing it, but And there is a distinction, like you go on a diet, like the Whole30, or you go on the South Beach diet or whatever, but then you talk Mm -hmm. about like, what diet do you follow? Meaning, what do you normally eat in a day? So it's hard, sometimes it's hard to distinguish. To me, anything that's a diet, like a diet mentality is anything that you're restricting or you're forcing yourself to do, um, or that's like way out of what you normally do. And it's like an all or nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, But so for example, when you were saying like the framing of it, you can do intermittent fasting for, um, you know, mental clarity or because you're, you follow a different faith. 
but then you don't eat all day because you're trying to, you know, cut calories. Those are very different things. It puts you mm-hmm. in a different frame of mind. But yeah, going on a diet, like a traditional diet, they don't work. It's not because like South Beach doesn't work or Whole30 is better. It's because of the structure of the diets and what they all have in common underneath, they're all the same. But mm-hmm. so people, when they fail on a diet, they attribute the failure to themselves. Like they don't have enough willpower um, because you feel like the common denominator, you know, like, oh, it must be me. Cause I just can't stick to anything, but all diets underneath the surface have lots of things in common, like all or nothing, like throwing out all your food, buying all new food, changing everything you do, like all at once. Um, they're compressed in a short amount of time, which all of that requires willpower. And so when you run out of willpower, what you usually do if you're an emotional eater is you turn to the thing that makes you feel better, which is Mm -hmm. to eat, you know, so eating to absolve yourself of the resistance. Um, that's how diets push you actually to eat if you're an emotional eater. And then that's Mm -hmm. part of why you fail, but they're also, you know, they're one size fits all. So like if I go on South beach and you guys go on it and I have kids and you don't have kids or we live in a different country and whatever, we don't have the same life circumstances. So things get in the way, but you feel like, well, everybody else is succeeding. Why can't I, you know, another thing is there's no personal responsibility. It's just like a set of instructions So you're not taking charge and you're not learning anything. And when the diet's over, you go back to what you were doing quite naturally. And those habits that you haven't changed bring the the weight right back to where, you know, it was before the diet. So it's not you, it's the diet. Diets don't work. And this, to your final question, is how they wreck your self-esteem because you keep trying, keep failing. There's a new diet. Oh, it's, this is the one that works and everybody gets on board, you know, and then some of your friends are like, have you done that? I did it. I lost 10 pounds. And then here you go. And it didn't work for you, but you feel like the failure. So you keep that feeling of failure puts you in desperation mode. Like you're not taking charge. You're just like, oh my God, I'm such a failure. I need another diet. You lash on to the next one. And when you do that for years on end, your self-esteem is just in the toilet, you know? So um, in a nutshell, that's how it's all connected to um, failure and self-esteem. Yeah, because you never actually have a small win, right? It's just like, I'm going to try this. Oh, Mm -hmm. I failed at that. That's on me. I'm going to try this now. Oh, failed at that. Also on me. Yeah, it's just a a vicious cycle. And um, also, you know, none of the diets ever – they never have anything sustainable. You know, Mm -hmm. it's never something where like I could actually eat like this for the rest of my life and be fine. It's always like, okay, for 30 days, you're going to do this. And it's just Mm -hmm. like, well, what about after 30 days? You know, like all or nothing. (laughs) And they convince you like, this is the one that works because like, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't include nightshade vegetables. What in the holy hell and (laughs) stuff like that. And it's like, there's no miracle. It's really just changing your habits. And food is not that complicated, actually. I mean, like we all know what to eat, but it's just, we're putting ourselves sort of in this victim mode of like, I, I can't lose weight. And it is hard. And I'm not making light of that because I was there for a very long time. But the beautiful thing is that we all have such power. We all just are not accessing it because we feel like such failures. But yeah, like you just said, start from step one, get a small win, keep going, build your confidence. And then pretty soon you'll just be surprising yourself about what you actually can do, you know? Yeah. And um, this is something I was really guilty of is I was always looking, no, I guess, I guess I'm going to say it was a diet at the time in my mindset. I did not think of it this way, but I was always looking for that perfect healthy way of eating. You know, like I really (laughs) fell for the health culture of just like, should I be vegan? Should I be keto? Um, Do I cut dairy out? What about gluten? Like I was just getting so many mixed messages about what I should be eating and I would try them for the time. But Mm -hmm. especially when I was on like the very strict um, like reduction diet where, you know, no gluten, no eggs, no dairy, I would be so good for so long. But the problem was I would want to go out and be social. I'd want to go to dinner with my friends. And my choices were, okay, there's nothing on here that I can eat. So I'm either going to just forget it and I'll eat whatever, or I'm not going to eat at all. 
And it was 50-50. Like sometimes I would just be like, well, I'm just not going to eat. And then I would binge on something else because like technically ketchup chips are (laughs) gluten-free. Right. Um, You know, so it's not like I was actually (laughs) making the healthy choice. You know, I was just like, it's in the parameters. I can eat it. And that's where a lot of like the junk diet food comes in, you know, like the vegetarian burgers, the gluten-free chicken fingers, um, you that can be ve- I'm vegetarian and you can eat the most crap diet. In yeah. The yeah. World. So I, yeah. I feel like in those parameters, it doesn't mean that that food is healthy. And I was just getting so stressed about food. And I love one thing that you said was food shouldn't be complicated. And eventually mm-hmm. I was just like, I can't make food complicated. I don't track macros. I can't track calories. You know, it, it doesn't yes. make sense for me. And so about two years ago, I was just like, you know what? I'm going back to how I ate as a kid. I ate meat, potatoes, vegetables. You know, I just ate real food. Yeah. And I have just noticed a complete change. Like I don't stress about food. Wait, it's the mindset. Your Mm -hmm. mindset shifted and that's, yeah. And sorry, I didn't mean Yeah, no, no, no. I did like, just to finish, I was just like, you know, I don't under eat. I don't overeat now. I just listen to my body. I'm just like, you know what? We're feeling ice cream today. And then yeah. the next one, I'm just like, man, I've got a terrible craving for carrots, you know? Like, <laughs> right, right. Bad. Well, it's like what you're saying is we're separating foods into good and bad. And yes. like, mm-hmm. it's sort of like this moral thing, like that's right, that's wrong. I've been good. I've been bad. And, um, and then that sets up this like counterbalance, like, well, I worked out really hard today, so I can eat this and then it's okay. Or you know, that kind of a thing, but like foods aren't good and bad. Foods are healthier for you or they're not so healthy for you. They, they contribute to you, your body running efficiently or they yeah. don't. And mm-hmm. it's okay. You have to, you can't be all or nothing. As soon as you get into all or nothing, it's, it's game over because then that's what makes you feel like a failure when you deviate in, even for a second, you know? And it's like, if you are, if you have celiac disease and you need to stay away from gluten, you know, that's one thing. But yes. like, if you're just trying to be, to eat healthier, you have to experiment with different foods. You have to cook, you know, use rosemary in your food. Oh, I don't ever cook with that. Let me try that. Or I don't, you know, eat Brussels sprouts. Maybe I don't really hate them. It's just, just be open and not Mm -hmm. like, you know, I can't eat this. I'm supposed to eat that. And that's what pits people against food and sets up a fear-based relationship with it, which is what another thing, a corollary to that is like looking at your body, setting up this, hatred of your own Mm -hmm. body and being hypercritical of yourself. It's all resistance. So yeah, allow, let it flow. If you decide that you can eat whatever you want, I guarantee you, you are not going to sit down and light into a plate of cookies because you're just going to be in a non-resistant state and say, huh, how do I feel when I eat this? You know, these Mm -hmm. taste really good, but I don't really feel that great. And that just helps you change, you know, little by little. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree. I think just listening to your body because your body knows, right? Like Mm -hmm. it it knows and you have to trust it. Absolutely. Not influencer on Instagram, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And I think people, most people are trying to put good things out there and they're trying to help people and that's great. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think the the messages get lost with the packaging of six pack abs and like you know, I'm ripped or I'm in this perfect, I have a perfect bikini body and I have filters and I look gorgeous with glowing skin. It's like, I don't even hear what you're saying. I'm just looking yeah. at you going, I don't look like that. And you're making me feel like shit about myself. Yeah, it's just like, how come you don't have cellulite? Like I'm unfollowing you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry if that's, if, if bad language. I hope you can no, no, that. that's okay. okay. It isn't, right. we are good with that. So <laughs> Let's dive into that a little bit more because as we were digging into your work over the last little while, we noticed that you emphasize a lot how dieting hurts a woman's ability to reach her full potential. So Mm -hmm. let's dive into how does society's pressure of looking a certain way contribute to that? Because to give a personal example, Laura and I have talked about this before where she was trying to find the perfect way of eating. I was trying to exercise my way Mm -hmm. through it all. It really affected my day-to-day life to a point where I was working out six days a week because I was like, if I don't do this, then I'm not going to look perfect when I go to this party two weeks from now. It was the worst when I was in school. And I remember being so obsessed with it that even 
if I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to work out today because I need to study for an exam. I would like beat myself up after. I'd be like, I can't believe you didn't go to the gym today. Like, you know, like you're not going to burn off your calories or you're going to look bloated tomorrow. I made the choice somewhere in my head that the grade or my schooling was more important. But that conditioning was like, oh, no, it's not. The way you look is the most important. Oh, totally. Yeah. So I think your question is, how does that keep women from reaching their potential? Is that what you would ask? Yeah. Yeah. um, Well, it's what you just said. We have such a, an obsessive, unnatural focus on what we look like. And the reason we do, we see all these messages, but the messages aren't just, you should have no cellulite and a perfect bikini body. What all of that is saying to us is that that is your worth. You know, Mm -hmm. as a woman, we don't get much deviation. I mean, it's like, here's the standard accepted body type. I mean, you can go slightly in variations like J-Lo or you can go skinny supermodel or whatever. But the basic message is, this is what you have to offer the world. And to the degree that you measure up to that, you'll have power and acceptance. And this is why we diet and spend our days, you know, looking in the mirror at our wrinkles and our necklines, which that's where I am now. Y'all are not, (laughs) you're not at that (laughs) point yet, but you know, over-exercising, you know, I'm going to look bloated. I'm, you know, and so all of that is because we have accepted hook, line and sinker that if I could be a rocket scientist, I could be, you know, running for president and what they're going to tell me is, well, you know, too bad she's unattractive. Or if you are attractive, you know, you, you're probably not smart. You can't do that. It's all about what we look like. It is like a cancer in our society and it's not going to change overnight. To answer the question, while you're doing all of this, like obsessing about what you look like, over-exercising, dieting, picking yourself apart and, you know, changing your diet constantly, what you're doing is you're wasting your potential because you're so busy doing all of these things and mm-hmm. you're not trying things that you could be doing that you're so powerful, but you don't even know it. And you're not going to try because if I can't even lose 10 pounds, how am I going to go do any of these things? Mm -hmm. So part of what I teach women and what I write about and talk about is that you have to set a goal that doesn't have anything to do with what you look like. You have to set a goal that brings you joy. And if you've spent 25 years of your life on a diet like I did, you're going to be starting really small. Like maybe your small goal is I want to run a 5k or, you know, I want to go back to school and take a class. And, you know, that's way out of your comfort zone. But as you start setting and achieving these goals, you start reclaiming like the joy and the creativity and all of that just cancels out. It takes all that resistance away out of your body. You start to breathe more easily. You start to get up and get excited about what you're doing for the day. And then you just keep setting and achieving goals. And pretty soon you're like shocking yourself. I mean, I went, I ran a 5K. I didn't really train for it. I just ran a 5K and I was all mm-hmm. excited about it. And then that le- led to 10K, half marathon and full marathon. And if you had told me, that I was going to run 26 miles. I would have never <laughs> believed it. And it took five hours, but still, but like, yeah, just setting and achieving goals. And it brings you back to just getting a glimpse of your true power. And so the more you're doing that, all of that spills over into your health. So it makes it easier to make the right choices. Cause you're not like obsessing anymore. You're just like, Oh yeah, I'm hungry. What do I want to eat? It just all is like a spiral upward instead of a spiral downward if that makes sense. Yeah. And you're really taking the focus off of it because it's one of those things, like if you look at something every day and just nothing's ever changing, then you don't ever realize it, even if it does change where, like you said, you know, focus on something else, set a different goal, take your mindset, like off what you look in the mirror. And then when Mm -hmm. you come back, you're like, oh, wow. Like, Hey, you know, I've been going out walking because like my goal is to go on this hike. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm beautiful and I'm strong and it's like, wow, you know, I, I don't have to feel like crap about myself all the time, you know? Um, and even if you get a little bit angry, I want people to get angry. Like, I can't believe I seriously, y'all. I mean, like 52 years old, I, I cannot even 
all of my good friends, even though I'm doing all this, you know, they probably aren't reading anything. Your friend, your friends and your family, <laughs> my mom <laughs> reads it. No, but like, um, they're not, they're, they still talk about it. Like, Oh, I need to lose weight. And it's like, y'all could be out here setting goals and, and being just so unbelievably successful. It's something that you're passionate about. And it just, it takes all of that out of your brain space, not completely because we're inundated with it by culture, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, that actually just kind of remind me of, of a friend of mine and um, she's in her 60s and just a full subscriber to the Weight Watchers program. You know, I, I just, yeah. I don't understand. I really just don't understand. <laughs> and And it really is going back to like also the older mentality because of the messages she would have grown up with at that Uh time. And she just cannot break her cycle because it's all about what the food is. Uh You know, oh, it's this many points. You know, she goes on walks every day. It's just like, you know, focus on that a little bit more, you know, like. Yeah, it's not enjoyable (laughs) to sit and count points and count calories and fat grams. Like we have totally missed out on food is just amazing. And and it tastes fabulous. And cooking is fun. It can be. (laughs) Yeah, I it's a pleasure of life, you know, like yes. culinary is a is a pleasure. <laughs> it's really, we've taken all the joy out of it and we've taken the joy out of our own souls by looking at what we look like on the outside and judging ourselves based on that. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. And I just kind of wanted to go back to the society pressure because this kind of goes also back to being in the right environment. So as Rachel and I were saying, you know, we, we've ridden horses our whole life, you know, we're competitive. And um, I grew up in showing in a certain type of class and it's called equitation and it's not judged on the horse, it's judged on the rider. And I was very fortunate to grow up in an environment where the message was not put on me. But if you looked at the industry as a whole, the girls who were winning at the very top level were all identical. They were skinny and tall with long mm-hmm. legs, you know, and it's it's just so hard because even in the equestrian industry, they have acknowledged it. Like this is a, a, an actual problem. It's a problem, yeah. And if you spoke to these girls and as they got older, they were starting to talk, like speak out about it, how some coaches had them on strict eating programs and training programs beyond just riding a horse. So like, you know, you ride horses wow. all day and then you have to go to the gym and then you you only eat so much. And it's really caused a lot of psychological damage for the women who were at the top and having to train like this. But Mm -hmm. then also on the other end, the girls who didn't fit that mold, they were just like, well, I feel like I can't even compete in that because like, I'm not tall with long legs and skinny. Yeah. Um, And how sad they're missing mm -hmm. out on so many beautiful young women. Yeah, Yeah. And the thing is like, you know, you don't have to look a certain way to ride a horse well. You know, no. like, <laughs> you know, what's funny. My daughter and I, she, my youngest is just getting into figure skating. And so we watched yep. I, Tanya, have y'all seen that? Yeah. So good. And, if, you know, Tanya Harding didn't look the part and mm-hmm. they wouldn't let her win, even though she's doing triple axles. So they're, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's the same kind of thing. Yeah. So that's, that's, you know, it's starting to change a little bit in the industry, okay. but again, you know, the judges there, it's very subjective. So, and they're scarred by all those messages too. They, they yeah. bought into it because it's pervasive. Yeah, exactly. So it's just, it's even if like the message is not directly pointed at you, it, it just depends on your environment because you still yeah. get sucked into that and you're like, okay, well, I better, you know, stay within these parameters. So yes. I, I can do well. <laughs> Right. It's acceptance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As we've gone through this section, we're talking about starting with goals that you're excited about. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, especially if you're struggling a lot with this, that can be really hard to get Mm -hmm. to that point. So what would you recommend is the first step? Is it really like, you know, sitting down with your journal and being like, what am I excited about? And creating goals from there. What would you recommend? Well, what I recommend is definitely you have to sit down and be, and and it might be driving your car and just sort of zoning out and and remembering when you were little, Mm -hmm. like what were some of the things when the world, when you, before you had gotten a lot of these messages, like what did you get excited about? What did you dream of being? And so like, this is kind of weird, but one of my dreams, I wanted to be... (laughs) 
<laughs> I wanted to be an interpreter at the United Nations. I thought like, cause I love traveling and like different countries. And so I thought, wow, if I could speak French and like interpret and be somebody like really important and, you know, something like that, or, you know, maybe you wanted to, maybe you wanted to be a figure skater. Maybe, maybe you wanted to be an artist or a painter. Just remember that and let yourself go there. Like with the, oh yeah, wow. I remember that. And then take something from one of those dreams you used to have and try to like take that bullet down to something that you could do today. So like if Mm -hmm. you're a mom or you have a full-time job or both and you're, you know, you're not going to go, you know, train to be a a professional figure skater at this point and that's fine. But like take a lesson or, you know, take a French class, set a smaller goal. So like if your goal was to be an interpreter at the UN and you love, that was your dream, set a goal maybe to, learn how to speak French fluently or Italian. And you can take that, dial that back even to like, okay, here's 10 steps I could take. I could go to Barnes and Noble and get a book on French or, you know, get a tapes to listen to how to learn how to speak French on your own or make a plan to move to a foreign country for a month or, you know, stuff like that. But then you take a smaller goal that you could bring out of that dream and write down 10 or 15 things that you could do right now that would get you closer to that goal and then take like the easiest three and like one or two a week and just it's just about getting your creativity sparked again so like Mm -hmm. just to go to barnes and noble and get a book on france it's like oh me fun like it makes you feel good you know Mm -hmm. like instead of like oh i gotta check off my list i gotta unload the dishwasher i gotta go get the dry cleaning i mean our lives are so like just we're beat down with all the stuff we have to do. Open up some space for dreaming and creativity. And once you start achieving those little milestones, it starts changing how you feel about yourself is what's important. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Excellent advice. I'm going to uh, definitely take that home tonight. Okay. Because, yeah, it's been uh, busy, busy times, so it's hard to let yourself go to that space. But yes, the more you yes. say it, the more it's just like it's so important to remind yourself that life is fun and yes. it's supposed to be fun. Like we're it's supposed to like – we're supposed to enjoy life. And yes, totally. I don't, I don't know. I just – I think that that's something that has gotten lost throughout, mm-hmm. I don't even – like centuries – I guess, a long, long time. And I do love to see that there is a shift happening and more and more people are like, no, I'm not going to let myself uh, be a slave to the gym. (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, just like force myself to do things that don't actually make me happy just because someone somewhere said that you should want this. So now we all think we should want it. Right. No, I and, think that's true. I think it's harder for women in some ways because we're caretakers and we've got people that are, you know, we feel like we have to be everything to everybody. Or if you have a full time job and then you feel like you got to come home and you've got to be, you know, keep your house perfect. It's it's a lot of pressure <laughs> on women to do mm-hmm. it perfectly. And we typically take all of that in and we shove it down. We shove down our feelings and we don't talk about it. So like your podcast, what y'all are doing is so beautiful because you're helping women like think and have a conversation and feel empathized with. So it oh, starts you. there. Too. Thank you. Yeah, of <laughs> course. Thank you. All right. So you've written a book. Yes. We would love to hear more about it for our listeners. It's called Love to Lose, Love Your Life and Watch the Weight Lose Itself. So yes. Where can we find it, first of all? Sure. You can find it on my website. So it's on my shop tab of my website. And the title, Love Your Life and Watch the Weight Lose Itself, is what we've been talking about. If you start loving your life and getting excited about your life, then you're not going to have to constantly be doing all of these, you know, self-sabotaging or just like masochistic things like starve yourself all day or go on a 10 mile dead sprint run, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So the focus is to learn how to love your life by setting and achieving goals, by learning how to take care of yourself better. But all of that being said, it's not fluffy, like, woo, yeah, take care of yourself. That's, you know, (laughs) we all hear that, but it's about changing your habits. So the main part of the book is 
how to actually change the bad habits, the health habits that you need changing to get to where you want to be. Wanting to be in the best shape that you can be in is not a bad goal, you know, Mm -hmm. and part of that does sometimes involve shedding weight that's not supposed to be there and that is showing up constantly because of how what we think and what we feel on the inside. So habits are a combination of how you think consistently and what you do consistently. And both of those feed off each other. So I show you how in the book, how exactly to spot the thoughts that are creating the bad habit, change those methodically. And then as you do that, little by little, take a bad habit and gradually convert it into a good habit And when you do both of those at once, you start getting exponential results. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that it's just all like tangible things. Yes. I'm a practical, like like, I want to know, tell me what to do. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Like I, I'm someone, I'm like, I need the (laughs) step-by-step to to get this done. And I love that. Yeah. That is just so amazing, Camille. So this is actually, this is Rachel's favorite question, but what is next for you in your vision and helping women live happier and healthier lives? Oh, wow. What's next? My vision has grown and (laughs) my life is like a mirror image of why I want it to be this. But my vision is to show women how the cultural influences that we are inundated with um, that don't just include what we look like, but how we don't speak up for ourselves, how we're taught to be ashamed of our sexuality, which is a big one. Um, Mm -hmm. And all of these things are intricately related to how we feel in our bodies and the shame that we carry around and the anger that we carry around. And my hope is that women will start to understand like that they've been living lives of doing everything for everyone else and staying silent, shoving down their feelings and being ashamed of their sexuality. All of that is connected and is conspiring to keep you in a much smaller place than you should be. So it's really to help women wake up and see what's going on and start accessing their power and just reaching their fullest potential. That's my goal. Oh, and it's so needed because, you know, we've all just been raised, you know, whether people knew it or not, to be people pleasers. Ah, you know, yes. like what, what man was raised to be a people pleaser? I, have yet I to get the gold, gold medal for that. <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but that's a huge problem. So, mm-hmm. well, that is. That's just absolutely amazing. And like, it's just, it's so nice to have this platform to connect with people like yourself who we all have different ways of wording it, but we are gunning for the same thing. And it's just, we want women to take their power back. And it's just, it's so important. And just thank you for the work that you're doing and speaking to you and reading your writing on your blog posts and such, like you're going to have such an impact. Thank you. Everything you said, I'm like, oh, we have to have so many follow-up episodes. There's so many little areas that we (laughs) can just dive into. Yes. Oh, let's break it all down. I would love to come back anytime. Yes. We'll have to do a series, but where where can our listeners find and follow you? On my website, CamilleMartinRD.com. And then I'm on Instagram, Facebook, I'm on TikTok, but I'm having TikTok shame. So you probably don't want to find me there. My kids are relentlessly mocking. Okay. Us. We don't even know how to use TikTok. We're like, <laughs> no, we don't. We're millennial, so like Instagram okay. is a struggle for us. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. But yeah, you can, I, I'm some version of Camille Martin RD. So, and I've got all the little badges on my website. You can click. Amazing. And this is, this is one thing we always have to ask our guests because we are in Canada and so a large base of our listeners are as well. Do you work with people internationally? Sure. Okay, good. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and you know, I don't do private counseling anymore. And the main reason why is a lot of what I say, women are totally 100% on board with it, but it's a message that has to be absorbed sort Mm -hmm. of by reading about it over time. Because what happened a lot of the time is that I would meet with people privately for counseling. And most of them said, I love this. This is great. Okay. Now give me, what am I supposed to eat? Tell me the eating plan. And I would Mm -hmm. say, no, 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 I'm not going to tell you what to eat. That's not the kind of 
that's not the dietitian that I am. You can go, yeah. there's plenty of them who will, but so I, I will happily answer any questions. If anyone wants to email me and ask me questions, I'm happy to help. I just don't do private counseling anymore. But yeah. No, that's fantastic to know because really like you're, you're building this community that yeah. is just broadcasting the message. So it's not exclusive to just a group. It's, it's for everyone because really yes. just every woman needs to hear this and break out of that cycle. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And just to make sure with your book on your website, um, you can do like international currency and shipping and such if like us as from Canada purchased it through your site. Yeah. So if you click on the purchase now, it just takes you to Amazon. Oh, perfect. So it, perfect. Because <laughs> it's hard to like say, here's the Amazon link because it's got all those weird numbers after it. So I just... <laughs> Linked it from my website. But yeah. <laughs> no, that's perfect. perfect. And we, we, you know, as we've um, <laughs> been doing this podcast and, and bringing on more guests, we're like, we need to ask these questions because it's always <laughs> no, after good. someone will be like, do they work with Canadians or like, can I get their book in Canada? And I'm just like, oh no, we didn't ask that. So, That's funny. You know, so now we're just making a point of making Make sure, sure that you, yeah. everyone is able to get it. And Absolutely. for our listeners, we just highly recommend that you grab this book. This is another one that we are going to be adding to our eventual podcast book club that we're yes. creating. Oh, you know, yes. We're working on it. Yeah, we're... I love that. <laughs> I want to be part of that. I love it. Oh, well, oh we'll definitely. Let you know once we have all the details figured out on that <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, you guys, I loved being on here. I don't know if we were about to wrap it up or not, but like, this has been so fun. Y'all are so easy to talk to and so engaging and it's just been so much fun. Well, thank you for joining us. We just love talking to you as well. I feel like we could just keep going. Yes. <laughs> okay, so many so different to things. be continued. <laughs> to be continued <laughs> for sure. If, if our listeners want to hear like a little bit more detail on something, just let us know and we will mm-hmm. bring... Camille back. Perfect. So Camille, is there just, is there any final message you would like to share with our listeners? Yes. I always say you have so much more potential than you could even imagine. And it's a total tragedy for you to waste one second of your life, much less years and years on end, trying to diet off the same 10 or 20 pounds. So just get busy, quit dieting, get busy setting and achieving goals and becoming who you were meant to be because we all need what you have to offer. We need you achieving your goals and spreading that to everyone, all other women. We're all in it together. So Amazing. So listeners, definitely go follow Camille. Check out her book. Check out her Instagram, her website. Definitely read her blog because we have been enjoying it. Um, <laughs> it's very engaging. And I personally, like we were talking about this before we started recording, but I love when articles get spicy and challenge um, <laughs> the norm. So like we're definitely going to be looking for your next blog post to come out and any in the future as well. You are so sweet. Thank you. I can always tell which ones have gone over the spicy meter because my mom truly does read everything I write and she always leaves a comment. And when I don't get a comment, I'm like, she didn't like that. Oh no. Uh, there, was two, there was an F-bomb or I said something about sex and she clicked out. So, Oh dear. Yeah. This is probably why our parents don't listen to our podcast. I think like, so. We don't want to know. There's things we don't want to know. Go tune in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you feel called to definitely share this episode and also reach out to Camille to let her know that you listened and enjoyed it. Always like and subscribe on our Instagram. And then if you feel called to as well, leave a five star review on our Apple podcast and now Spotify podcast. Thank you again, Camille, for joining us. You have been wonderful. Thank you for having me. Hello, Podfam, and welcome back to the After 8 Tea Party. <laughs> sorry, Rachel. I, I can I'm see sorry. your face, and I can see that you're losing your shit. So I'm sorry. I, I, I can hold it together better. I can hold it together better. I just, I still love the dramatic. You like lead into it, and you're just like, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, hi, everybody. We hope that you enjoyed our episode with Camille. I know that we did. And, you know, I definitely cried a little, like twice. Oh, my gosh. During that recording. uh, Camille, she is another woman who is changing the world. And, of course, Mm -hmm. that's why we had to have her on our show. I, too, Rachel. Like, when she said that she started dieting at 12 years old. Yeah. Like, that just broke my heart. 
But like on the other sense, I think back to when I was a child and I was just like, you know what? That's that's around the same age that I started being aware yeah. of, you know, adolescence and, and going through puberty and, and growing. So I feel like it's so common that it's, and it's never talked about, but it's really common that yeah. girls start becoming very aware of what they're putting in their bodies. And also like um, in our situations, Rachel, like how active we're yeah. being just so we can still try to fit this mold. But the thing is like, you're becoming a woman, you know, your, mm-hmm. your body is supposed to <laughs> develop and grow not stay this like little itty bitty stick figure forever. Yeah. And like, I remember it like brought me back to a time that like I haven't thought about in a while. Cause like, I mean, you've known me since I was a kid and like, you know, I, I didn't have a slow lead in to a woman's body. Like it was kind of, I woke up one day and boom, I was looked like I was 19. Mm -hmm. And one, I also, we had the riding muscle and I just remember looking at the girls around me who were kind of going through it slowly and you know like maybe if they did do sports it was like running yeah you know like we we've talked about it before but what we were faced with when we were that age was like the magazines Mm -hmm. and this was like before our time but like uh Jennifer Aniston and friends like that was like who that was like the body type that we were trying to or told we should try to emulate and like I wasn't that but I no. saw people around me who were, and I just remember it was like there was some disordered eating happening at that time. But I didn't know that because the world didn't know how to define it. No, it was just like this is just what you, you do. do. And so many women around us were who were older, you know, they were always saying like, "Oh, I have to go jean shopping. Oh, I have to fit in a bathing suit." Like whether they were aware of it or not, this is the conversation. Like this is what we were hearing as children you know so it's it's only natural that we then absorb that and as we come into that age like oh god i have to go jean shopping it's it's just something that we're not even conscious about anymore mm-hmm. and i love with camille you know she is someone who is trying to wake us up from this and be like no be careful about what you're saying especially to yourself or to your to your daughter because it's time to break that cycle you know we're yeah. we're so much more as she said than than what we look like you know um, and very much when she was saying that, I was thinking like the world only cares about like your image. They don't care mm-hmm. about what's in your head or, yeah. you know, what's in your heart and your actions where it's it's up to us to, to change that. You know, we're not going to stand for just looking a certain way anymore. Exactly. Like one kind of example that just came to my mind of this and I haven't put it in this context before is like I used to have like a gap between my teeth when I was in school. And I remember telling myself, I like convinced myself to get Invisalign braces Mm -hmm. because I was like, well, I'm going to go into the corporate world in a professional boardroom and people aren't going to take me seriously because I thought that my teeth made me look unattractive so people wouldn't respect what I was saying. And like, that's a wild thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) to think. But really, like, yes, it's wild to think when you break it. But it is the reality. (laughs) Yeah, but literally with every single person, I swear, it's just like, you know, insert whatever, I don't feel attractive or like, Mm -hmm. no one's going to take me seriously. Yeah. You know, her, just the section where she told us where to start with, I think will be helpful for a lot of people. And I hope that any of our listeners who might be struggling with this really take that to heart. And we really hope that it helps you overcome your struggles yes like Camille has extended an olive branch definitely take it if you feel Mm -hmm. like you need someone to talk to to help you break out of that mindset because I I loved when she said you know yes I'm a registered dietitian but like I'm not going to tell you what to eat I'm going to help you you know set the goals and and break out of that mindset Mm -hmm. so your body can actually like just function on its own right like you're not needing that crutch of like, oh, I need to be told exactly what to put in my body or else I'm wrong. Yes, definitely. I think we definitely are going to be having her back probably Absolutely. many times. Absolutely. Uh, I am 100% into doing an episode about releasing shame around our sexuality because yes. that is just, that's so important and oh, that could get to be a spicy episode. Yes, it will. And it's, and like, I'm going to be completely candid on this podcast here. Like, it's been a reach for us 
yeah. to open up about certain things like, you know, relationships and even talking about our bodies um, and and things that we have done that are not so cool um, when it comes to our health. And I mean, it's it's just practice of of talking about it. And then it really helps when people say like, because you said this, I feel like I can share my story too. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what I love when we have guests like Camille come on. It's just like, we give each other that safe space to to talk about these things. So yes, like Camille, we know you're listening. So you're coming back back on to talk about (laughs) sex. Um, because Rachel and I were getting pretty comfortable about it. I mean, in our last week's episode, I think we talked about the, um, physics of getting a Brazilian wax. So we are ready. We are ready. (laughs) We are ready. And yeah, like I, I kind of love it because it's one difficult to talk to your partner about this stuff anyway, but it's also like, I think where having that community of women to talk about comes in as like this much needed thing is because like, we understand Yes. What the other person is saying, because like your partner, he could be like the best person in the world and fully be willing to understand, but there's always a certain aspect that they Mm -hmm. can't quite get to. And that's okay because that's where your community of women comes in. So it's so important to have those conversations and build that safe space. Yeah, I love that you said that because I know we have supportive people in our life. You know, like Mm -hmm. my boyfriend, he will look at me when I have like unwashed hair. Yeah. I'm wearing like a stained old ratty t shirt and like, I don't even know, probably even not even pants. And he'll look at me and be like, you're gorgeous. And like, that's so nice. But in my head, I'm just like, I think I just dropped like some salsa on myself. Like, I know I'm not. gorgeous right now and you try and have these conversations with them but they just they don't understand because they haven't really experienced what women experience so yes like as you were saying you know having a community of women who just understand it on a deeper level because when someone loves you they're just going to be like oh you look great you know like they're Mm -hmm. not going to be like I understand that you think you look this way but you know how can I help they just give you the like no, you're fine. Like, it's good. Get over it. Like, why are you stressing about this? You know, you have a breakout on your, on your face and it's just like, why are you stressing about it? You look fine. It's just like, no, in my head, I am not fine. (laughs) Yeah. A hundred percent. Like there's definitely been times where like my hair is like a rat's nest off the side of my head. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't think I look good today. And my boyfriend's like, oh, but you look fabulous. I know. It's like you're a liar. (laughs) I'm like, in what context? But like genuinely, like they think that you do because they just look at your face. Yeah. But we're like, like okay. <laughs> but we're like, oh my God, but my eyebrows haven't been done in a bit. Like my hair is a mess. I haven't washed it. Mm-hmm. Like this t shirt makes me look frumpy. Like we literally look at everything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Men, men just kind of look at like they're like a glaze, you know? They're yes. just like, overall, I find you appealing. <laughs> Yet to a woman, we're just like, I have an eyebrow hair out of place. <laughs> like- yes. We're like, everyone definitely notices this. I'm going to go yes. into my meeting later and someone's going to look at me and be like, this girl. Did not do her eyebrows today. Yeah, it's like and we literally, it shows. We literally <laughs> walk around thinking like there's spinach in my teeth. <laughs> That's literally how we act, but like with our whole bodies. <laughs> pretty much, pretty yeah. much. So yes, I really hope all of our listeners really enjoyed this episode as much as we did. She is such an inspiration, and please check out her website. Check out everything, Camille, because I think you're really gonna love it. She's mm-hmm. an incredible writer. Be free, little birdies. Be free. (laughs) Be free. All right. Well, with that, live like tea. Live like tea.